Reporting from Arkham Asylum, this is Gotham Rogues. In this video we take a look at the underrated rogue, the Rat Catcher. Before we get into the video, I want to say, rest in peace, Adam West. In order to honor the legacy of Adam West's Batman, one of the most important versions of the character, I've decided to drop my plans of waiting with doing 66 videos, so you'll start seeing them very soon. So I finally made a rat catcher video, the most requested character by you guys. Are you happy now? Well you better be. The rat catcher made his first appearance in a two-parter published across Detective Comics 585 and 586 in 1988. The story, simply titled The Rat Catcher, was written by Alan Grant and John Wagner and penciled by Norm Brayfogle. In it, Batman stumbles upon a bizarre character who uses a special whistle to control swarms of rats, commanding them to kill. The Dark Knight follows this rat man down into the sewers, where he discovers that this deranged individual, calling himself the Rat Catcher, is holding several prisoners. These people were all involved in the conviction of one Otis Flanagan many years ago. The rat catcher is Otis Flanagan and he used to be an exterminator and Gotham's official rat catcher until he was convicted of killing a man during a brawl getting a 10-year prison sentence. Upon being released Otis took on the identity of the rat catcher and kidnapped the people who condemned him including the presiding judge of his case and the arresting officer. These people have been held down in the rat catcher's sewer lair for five years when Batman finally arrives to rescue them. After this two-parter, Otis Flanagan made several cameo appearances and returned in a major role during the Prodigal storyline in 1994. This was when Dick Grayson, aka Nightwing, briefly took on the role of Batman after Azrael had been defeated during Night's End. In this story, Otis escapes from Blackgate, but is quickly recaptured by Dick and Tim Drake. Next up, the Ratcatcher appeared in a three-part crossover with Catwoman in 1995 called The Secret of the Universe. It should have been called The Bat, The Rat and The Cats though, as it features two separate storylines that intertwine in the end, one featuring Batman going after Otis, who's working on the biggest scheme of his career, namely to poison all of Gotham with various diseases, wiping out mankind. He then plans for a new breed of genetically engineered super rat that he's created to inherit the Earth. Meanwhile, Catwoman is hired by some cat cult to reclaim a sacred cat costume of theirs that's been stolen by Catman. In the end, Batman, Catwoman and Catman kinda just end up in the Ratcatcher's lair just as he's about to initiate his plan. Next, Otis appeared during Aftershock in 1998 when Gotham had been hit by a devastating earthquake which eventually led into the No Man's Land arc. In this one, Batman and Robin tried to rescue a bunch of people stuck on the ground inside a crashed train car but finds the rat catcher lurking down there as well. Flanagan then made his last big appearance of what I like to call the rat catcher's glory days. This was in no man's land in 1999. During this massive arc, rat catcher sees control of an area down in the sewers filled with stockpiled supplies. He later runs into Mr. Freeze who's also roaming the sewers and the two form a strained alliance. The duo then fights Robin who's been sent down there by Batman to fetch the supplies and distribute them amongst the civilians above ground. After the 90s closed and we entered the 2000s, Ratcatcher was relegated to small appearances and cameos, and then during 2005's Infinite Crisis, the character was killed off. He did return in the New 52 continuity though, mainly in Batwing's title, fighting that hero instead of Batman. As for other media, he's actually just appeared in video games, but not in big roles. He appeared as a boss alongside two giant mutant rats in the forgotten 2003 game Batman Dark Tomorrow. Although he never physically appeared, the character is referenced several times in the Arkham games, and his bio can be unlocked in both Arkham Asylum and Arkham City. He was also featured in the Arkham Unhinged series, the comic book based in the Arkham continuity. Yeah, there isn't really that much history to the rat catcher, so you might wonder why I didn't just do this video as a forgotten Batman villain as opposed to underrated rogues. Well, the simple reason is, even though he hasn't really made that many appearances, he doesn't seem to be all that forgotten. Just the fact that he's been requested by so many people kind of proves that he's very well remembered. I've also seen him show up on many lists on the internet, namely lists of the worst Batman villains. This gives me two more reasons to consider Flanagan underrated instead of forgotten. 
One, people remember him enough to put him on lists, and two, they think he's one of Batman's worst villains, which is just not the case. I don't really understand why people think Ratcatcher is goofy. To me, he's fucking creepy. I mean, he can command thousands of rats to swarm you and eat you alive. In just what way is that goofy? How is that on the same level as the kite gimmicks of Kite Man? I also think that the character's design is creepy, with that gas mask and the dark, drab colors of his outfit. He looks like something out of a horror movie. Yeah, I do have to admit that it is a bit goofy that Otis actually kinda looks like a rat himself. But we rarely see him without the mask anyway, so who cares? It's a shame that the characters stopped appearing after the 90s. It seemed like DC were building him up to become a mainstay in the rogues gallery, but then just suddenly pulled the plug on him for some reason. I feel that the Ratcatcher is a pretty unique villain among the Bat Rogues, in that no one else really controls swarms of a particular animal, unless you count Penguin controlling birds, but he really does that anymore, and it was never his main gimmick anyway. There are no other rat-themed rogues either, while you have two cat-themed villains. Otis also did not fall into the same trap as another Grant Brayfogle rogue did, the Corrosive Man. In both of these characters' first appearances, they were motivated by revenge on the people they felt had wronged them. That works great for one story, but you can't just keep on rehashing that plot point. It gets old pretty fast, just like it did with Corrosive Man. The writers never did come up with a new goal for him besides killing Mortimer Cadaver, and that's probably why he disappeared as fast as he did. Already in Flanagan's second story, they dropped the whole revenge scheme, and instead had him become a rat supremacist. Otis' main goal from there and onwards was to kill off Earth's true pests, humans, and let rats inherit the world with him as leader. That's a motivation with a lot more longevity, and it makes the characters stand out, because it's totally fucking insane. It's basically in the same vein as Poison Ivy's goal, but with rats instead of plants. What I find really interesting too is that Otis used to be an exterminator and killed rats for a living. He now feels great remorse over this, and his quest to create a planet of the rats is a way for him to atone for his sins, to make up for all the rat blood on his hands. That's pretty damn deranged, but still makes sense in an insane kind of way. I honestly think that the Ratcatcher should have become a regular recurring foe in the comics, and also made a transition into cartoon shows. Of course he could never be one of the top guys like Penguin or Scarecrow, but at least on the same level as say Black Mask or Hugo Strange. So there you have it, that's the story of underrated rogue, the Ratcatcher. What do you think about this character? Do you think he's as goofy as Kite Man, or do you feel like I do, that he's a neglected gem in the rogues gallery? Let me know in the comments. And as always, remember, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.